Ray, she's f***ing watching this. Ray, she's watching in the mirror. She just saw the reflection. You truly are my child. Hey there, Net Best Buddies, and welcome back to the channel. As always, I'm Ray, and today we're going to be looking at Unbreakable. So Unbreakable is the first in the superhero trilogy by M. Night Shyamalan. I don't know if it was ever intended to be, but eventually we got the sequel split, which was a huge surprise to everybody that it turned out to be that. And in a couple days, we'll be getting Glass. So I figured Glass is coming out. I've watched Split. Should probably watch the original. So I did. While well, I have you here at the beginning of the video, definitely go down and subscribe so you can stay updated with all the videos that I do put out. And the question this time around is, what's your favorite M. Night Shyamalan movie? Or your least favorite, you can let me know that too. My least favorite is probably Lady in the Water. Although I haven't seen After Earth and I've not heard good things about that. After becoming the only survivor of a train accident, David Dunn is contacted by a man with a theory that he may have survived the event because of his latent superhuman abilities. So I'm gonna get this out of the way right now. I love this movie. My God, it was so good. I did not expect it at all. I will say it does show its age a little bit, but not in a bad way. And it definitely shows M. Night Shyamalan at the height of his career, up there with similar films like The Sixth Sense and Signs. Some of the dialogue exchanges in particular were extremely entertaining and definitely reminded me a lot of his older films. And of course, he plays a minor side character in this one too. Uh, it, does he not do that in any of his movies? Like, I feel like he does that in every single one of his movies. That and the twist, that's, that's what he's known for. Bruce Willis and Samuel L. Jackson are incredible in this movie. I loved Jackson's Elijah starting as this sort of mentor character to Bruce Willis, only for us to eventually learn his sinister motives and terrible previous actions. I also really like where we first meet Bruce Willis' character, David Dunn, where he's in this sort of failing marriage with this somewhat estranged child, and that was kind of refreshing from a superhero movie. I feel like we don't really see that kind of origin at least in modern superhero movies. So I knew that Bruce Willis, as the title suggests, is unbreakable in this movie and he's basically bulletproof and he can't be harmed. I didn't know that he never got sick. Uh, I knew from the glass trailer that he had superhuman strength, but what I didn't know is that he has this other ability where if he bumps into somebody, he gets a glimpse of their past and uses that to kind of see if someone's, you know, good or bad. And that was really cool. I did not expect that. I thought it was honestly just a clever edit in the glass trailer, because we do see it in there. But yeah, I just thought that was a weird edit, I didn't realize that was one of his abilities. So the story unfolds slowly, but as David's past is revealed to him, I found myself absolutely entranced by what was going on in the movie, especially once he starts to accept the fact that he has these abilities, like when he's in the basement with his son and he's like, he's bench pressing and he's realizing he can bench press like an insane amount. That was great scene. Although the fact that his child does try to shoot him kind of out of nowhere, that came out of left field and I was not expecting that. Also surprising was some of the really dark stuff that we see David's secondary ability show him about some people. Man, there was some messed up stuff in there. So the revelation that Elijah is the one causing all these terroristic attacks in the newspapers just to try to find his counterpart blew Amanda's mind and was really a great reveal. I mean, I already knew that he was evil because I've read up on Unbreakable, I've seen Split, uh, I know from the Glass trailer that he's still the villain. So it didn't really surprise me, but I love the way they handled it. I love how the character sets up David to learn about his abilities with this congratulatory handshake over his first like vigilante mission going down successfully. And he knows that he's going to see all this messed up stuff. And that was just awesome. I will say I really only had two negatives for the movie. Some of the dialogue, especially early on in the film, delivered a little oddly. It could have been better. And the ending after the reveal of Elijah being the villain, he David like leaves the room and then it freezes. And then there's some text that comes up on the screen like, oh, David called the cops or whatever. And then it plays a little longer. And then it freezes again and does more dialogue. And I really just wish they would have had that scene play out all the way, fade to black, then show that dialogue. I think that would have been a much better choice. But, you know, I'm just talking about movies. Shyamalan's making them. He gets to choose. I have heard some mixed things about the movie, but after my first of what I can only imagine will be many viewings, I think this is one of my favorite superhero movies ever. Unbreakable gets a 9 out of 10. Thinking about it now, this might be my favorite Shyamalan movie. Uh, it's really a Sophie's choice between this and... 
The Last Airbender. Just kidding, this movie's garbage. So that's my review for Unbreakable, guys. As always, it means a great deal you're continuing to watch the content that I do put out. Like I said at the beginning, definitely go down and subscribe to stay up to date with all the videos that I do put out. Give the video a like, share with a movie-loving friend, and let me know down in the comments down here your favorite and least favorite Shyamalan films. Also, if you're excited for Glass, let me know that too. Thanks for watching, everybody. See you.